This is Christopher Bruza. Welcome back. Uh, we're taking a short pause from the AIAX load workup video, and we're here with my JP Enterprises JP15, which I consider my precision AR15. This rifle is typically something I bring to the range when I'm shooting my, my bolt actions or specifically my, my AIAX to shoot um, while that's cooling down. I don't like to put more than 20, 30 shots on it in a row. So I will shoot this and it has no issues hitting targets out to certainly 800 yards. Uh, you can hit beyond that, but it's not, a, not as consistent. So you're certainly getting into the transonic range of the 77 Sierra Match King. So uh, I originally built this rifle as a two or three gun rifle. By the time I acquired all the gear to dip my toes into that sport, the ranges around here, uh, the, the scene kind of fell apart. One, one of them shut down, uh, the other two stopped offering uh, two and three gun matches in favor of PRS and DMR style matches, which I don't really have an issue with. That's that's more my style, but I, I figured it'd be good to, to try. So this has kind of been relegated to a toy or a, a range toy, I guess. Uh, but that was not the intent when I uh, built it. And this is built by JP, you can go on their website and configure your rifle as you want it. There are several, several options, and this is how I configured mine. So starting back here at the butt, we have the LMT SOP mod stock. This is not a B5, it's the LMT, uh, which gives me a good cheek weld. Being an AR, uh, not too many there, there aren't too many choices out there for adjustable butt stocks. You have like the Magpul PRS, but I wanted the, the carbine style look and I didn't want a fixed butt stock. And tried a few. This puts me in a reasonable position. I ended up changing the scope height a few times and we'll get into that when we talk about the scope. But this uh, gives me a decent cheek weld. It's not like a, a bolt at, or my AI or any bolt action with an adjustable. You can just, you just lay in there, you lay behind it all day and your head's not gonna move out of alignment with the scope. This is reasonable for, for an AR. The buffer tube is a six position mil spec and it's just uh, their stock buffer tube. It's, it's nicely staked. I mean, JP builds really high quality rifles. If I were to buy a AR-10 for PRS, it would be a JP, no question about it. This is the traditional recoil spring they offer, uh, silent and captive, these things with uh, buffers attached to the recoil spring. Uh, this is a normal style, it's polished, and uh, I, other than that, it looks just like your traditional recoil spring. Moving forward, we have the Bravo Company grip. Uh, this is gives a more vertical grip with the, the duck bill, which I prefer. And I put this on all of my ARs. Coming up, we have an Ambi Safety. It's required for me. I, I shoot this left-handed because I'm left eye dominant. So we have the Ambi Safety. And the trigger is a Timney two-stage. Uh, the rifle came with the, the JP Match trigger, I believe. Yeah, it says uh, JP component trigger complete fire control package. Uh, it's a single stage trigger. I felt felt really good. It was close to a bolt gun trigger. I don't like single stage. So I swapped it out for a drop-in Timney two-stage. 
I wanted something a bit crisper than the Geisley, which I typically run on an AR, but for a more precision oriented setup, I wanted a better break on the trigger. Uh, the Geisley is going to be much more reliable, I'm guessing, but I went with this and it, it's very, very decent. Um, let's see, the, the trigger, the first stage, one and a half pound first stage, and then it's going to break, let's see. So it's a one and a half pound first stage, about a one and three quarter pound second stage. That's sufficient. Um, and it, it works well. You'll see the trigger pins have uh, flathead cap screws on them. That's the way it comes, it's so they don't walk out. I've never had issues with a trigger pin walking out, but I, I left it. The takedown pins are slightly dished on the side you push them out, so I guess you could use like a, you know, a punch and it's not going to slide off. Uh, it's nice to have. I wouldn't spend extra money to, to get that. Um, it has an ambi mag release. So you've got your ambi mag release there. A traditional bolt release. That is not ambi, and it's not something I see the benefit of putting like a bad lever or something like that on it. The charging handle is a Radian Raptor ambi. It's the larger one, and this is a must uh, for me on an AR, and luckily JP has that option. It's easy to change, but the... The bolt carrier is polished stainless steel and it's their low mass carrier. And the theory is you have less mass moving back and forth, which has an adjustable gas block. Um, it's just their standard adjustable gas block. So you tune the gas enough to reliably cycle the firearm, but to min also minimize the amount of mass moving, which disrupts the rifle when you're when you're trying to spot your your shot. Uh, so it's a low mass bolt carrier. It cleans very easily. Um, it it works well. Um, it has a small firing pin diameter on it. So if you're hand loading and pushing your loads, you aren't going to get crazy cratering from the firing pin hole. So the barrel on this is a stainless steel, uh, one in eight twist, two, two, three wild chamber. And this is the only two, two, three I have that has a wild chamber. It shoots fine. It, it, I mean, the gun's accurate and, uh, it works. It's a uh, stainless steel and the dissipator muzzle brake. The JP muzzle brake is very, very effective, and the barrel is cut, so there's no washers or anything you have to do to time it. There's no lock nut. The compensator or brake uh, threads on and stops in the correct orientation because they they cut the muzzle and time the, the threads that way. So you will see a lot of metal inside of this handguard. Uh, this rifle has the JP heat dissipator, I believe they call it. It is a heat sink that clamps onto the barrel. Um, it clamps in two pieces. And I was skeptical. I mean, the, the theory is, is great. And I don't know why we aren't seeing this on, say, precision bolt action rifles. Uh, what you're doing is you're clamping a heat sink onto the barrel. So the heat sink has fins on it 
which greatly increase the surface area. So you're pulling heat onto the heat sink and then using convection to cool down the heat sink, which in turn you're cooling down your barrel. In theory, that can give you mirage issues because you're pulling a lot of the heat and concentrating it into the air right below your scope, not an issue for me. Uh, they didn't install this for me because I was skeptical, so I shot it without it. Uh, took the handguard off, installed it at the range, put the handguard back on. My point of impact did not change, and my group size did not change. I was very surprised at that, um, and I'm glad. I mean, maybe this is the only one where it doesn't do that, but on this rifle, it didn't change, and I'm, I'm sold on it. I would love to see it on a bolt-action rifle. Coming up, we have an adjustable gas block. Uh, it's made out of stainless steel. They offer one with a detent. This doesn't have detents on the adjustments, so it's pretty much you set it and you leave it, you don't adjust it if you're gonna be running a suppressor or something like that. There's a set screw in the front which locks the adjustment screw into position and it just chokes off the gas going into your bolt carrier group. Uh, the whole system works great and it's not, not an issue. The hand guard is the Mark III signature handguard. This is the old school, old style handguard. But it, in my mind, this is what JP rifles wear. So it's what I opted to get rather than the rapid configuration handguard. And I believe they offer an M-Lock one now. But this is, I got this for aesthetic reasons. It's not as functional, you have to drop a backing plate for any rails or anything like that you put on there and especially with this heat dissipator um, they kind of conflict this isn't the hand I would suggest getting a different handguard one of their newer ones just to keep up with the times but I wanted this look on the rifle and you know, I'm not always adjusting my handguard and putting different accessories on there I do have a sling mount down here and a rail. Uh, the rail is because I think every AR should have a light on it. Um, if I'm gonna, if I were to compete with this, no, I'd, I'd take it off, but I'm not gonna have it sitting in the safe without a light on it. So I just put a little scout light on there and it, it serves its purpose. Normally I'm not using this with a bipod uh, I do have a sling stud on there, and it holds it well for the video. This is just your Harris Notchleg 6 to 9 inch bipod swivel. swivels. And we talked about the muzzle brake. It's very effective. It's loud. It's a real loud brake, but it's, it's very effective. It has two ports on each side as well as four holes on the top, which help keep your muzzle down as well as reducing the recoil. That brings us to the scope. It's a Schmidt and Bender PM2, one and a half to eight by 26. So a lot of times you'll see the scopes that look like this are typically on ARs. There, there are 24 millimeter objectives. This is a 26 and it's a 34 millimeter tube instead of a 30 millimeter tube. Um, it's extremely forgiving, huge eye box. It is exceptional. Uh, one and a half power functions very much like one power. The reticle is illuminated and it's daylight bright. So you crank the reticle up, two eyes open, one and a half power, it works just like a red dot. Um, and then I have this little shark fin on here. It's an accessory sold by Schmidt and Bender. It fits all their scopes that have a 
metal uh, magnification ring, like the, the older designs, the 5 to 25, 3 to 12, 4 to 16, don't have that. But the newer ones, the short dots, the ultra short dots, um, where this is a short dot, it's a PM2 short dot. I guess I should have said that before. Uh, this will work like the 3 to 20 by 50, which I run on bolt actions. This will fit that. I don't use it because I'm not changing magnification that often, but uh, it goes up to 8 power and it's a first focal plane reticle. So zoomed out, it's pretty much a red dot. And when you zoom in, you get a fairly coarse hash marked reticle for holdovers and wind. Uh, it works great. Um, this is an excellent optic for a AR that you want to be able to hit targets out to roughly 800 yards as well as use in a close quarters, two eyes open situation. I love it. Uh, it seems to be the 1.1 to 8 by 24 gets a lot more attention. I don't understand why it could be. I mean, this is a big scope and it's 34 millimeter tube. Could be because of that. But I mean, somebody will put like a, a night force or something on there, which is just as big. So I like it and it's an excellent optic for this for this rifle. It has single turn turrets. So you've got, it's labeled as 13 mils of adjustment and then it stops. It's actually more like 13 and a half and it'll go three tenths of a mil below zero, two tenths of a mil below zero. And your windage stops right around six mils. So you can't get spun around on your windage and lose your zero. There is no detent at zero on this. I, I've seen, I have some that, that do have a detent on zero and I'd like to see it on here. But these are fairly hard to move. Um, I, I don't see it being a real world problem, but it, it'd be nice to see. It came with the bikini cover and I replaced that with the Tenebrex covers. Um, they're easier to just flip up. You don't have to set a bikini cover down and they, they fold pretty much out of the way. They work. And the mount I mentioned with the buttstock, I went through a few different mounts, different heights primarily. And I generally prefer Badger Ordnance for a screw mount like this. And the first one I tried, it's either too high or too low. I, I made an educated guess at the height. That didn't work and I changed it and the height was correct. However, I couldn't get the eye relief correct. The scope wouldn't go far enough forward. So I ended up getting the same height, 1.44 inches in a night force mount, which was had a larger cantilever on it. So you'll see this is mounted about as far forward as I can get it, but it gives me the proper eye relief on this while maintaining a good length of pull for me. With the other scope mount, if I extended the stock out all the way, it probably would have worked just fine, but that's not, not how I shoot the rifle. Um, so this is a night force, it's an alloy mount. I'm guessing they mean aluminum alloy because it certainly isn't steel alloy. So I attempted to build a two or three gun rifle and ended up building a precision gun that will also work in close quarters situations. If that type of competition starts up in this area again, I will be shooting them with this, with this rifle. So until next time, uh, thank you. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Um, I'm trying to hit the 100 subscriber mark. 
Um, and until next time, enjoy. <laughs>